I'm Malcolm Margolin. I'm at City Lights Bookstore in San Francisco. And I'm going to be reading a passage from an Indian, a Wintu Indian prayer that was recorded. There was an, a woman named Sadie Marsh that remembers her grandfather praying, saying this prayer as an old man. And the Wintu language, it's, it's up in Mount Shasta in California. And al along with other California Indian languages, the language was banned. It was destroyed. They tried to drum it out of people. Kids were taken to boarding schools. They were forbidden to speak their language. They were whipped if they spoke their language. And the loss to California's self-understanding to the variety and diversity of the world is just immense. It's unspeakable. And, the, and, and I picked a, 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 this particular prayer because it illustrates that it, it's in English. But behind it, you can get some sense of the language. And it's an old man, he'd wake up in the morning, he'd wash his face, and he would pray, and he would, sit, and he would start the prayer with, I am advancing in old age, I am not capable of anything anymore. You whose nature is to be eaten. And that he's talking about the deer, but the language had a delicacy about it. You didn't talk to the deer directly. You didn't mention their name. It was rude. You referred to them obliquely. You whose nature it is to be eaten. You dwell high in the west on the mountains, high in the east, high in the north, high in the south. And this obsession with direction, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. And he talks to the salmon, and then he talks to the various things around him. If you are rock, look at me. If you are tree, look at me. If you are water, look at me. It's a person comfortable in the world talking to things around him, in a world in which rocks and water and everything is alive, and everything is listening to him. And then he talks about how um, uh, my legs are advancing in weakness. Sugar pine, you sit there, I can never climb you. In my northward arm, in my southward arm, I am, I am advancing in weakness. And that was such a wonderful concept embedded into this Wintu language that my northward, that I'm sitting here, so this is my, uh, and I would say in English that the bay is off to my right and the Pacific Ocean is off to my left. In the Wintu language, there was no left and right. The bay is off to my east, and this is my eastward arm. If I were to turn around, this same arm, I would refer to it as the westward arm. You don't, you're not the center of the world giving things direction. You take your direction, you change your identity according to where you are in the world. And the, um, and there was a modesty to the language, there was a humility to the language that you had in the wonderful Wintu language if I were to say that I am sitting, that I am, that Stacy Lewis works at City Lights, I would have to say it in a grammatical form that talked about how I knew it. So if I knew it from hearsay, there was a rumor, I would use one grammatical form. If I knew it because I'm sitting in her office and I see her, it's another grammatical form. If I know it because I've heard it from somebody else, if I've, I've, heard, if I've deducted it, if, I've, if, if it's a mythical statement that in, in the great creation myth, Stacy Lewis worked at City Lights, that you have different grammatical forms for everything that you say. And when I listen to political speeches in the English language, you, you couldn't get away with that stuff in Wintu. You have to have it rooted. You have to tell how you know things. And th there were once a hundred different languages in California, as different from each other as English and Chinese. And each one of them had a, a depth, they had a nuance, they had a way of defining the world, they had a musicality. And it was all, it was largely wiped out in attempts to help Indians, to help them. So much has been done, so much destruction has been done in the guise of helping people, to help them assimilate so they could become part of the dominant culture, so that they wouldn't have to speak these old languages anymore. And the, um, the miracle is that they're still around, that there's still people speaking them, that there's still people learning them, and we can mourn them, we can feel guilty about the role that the white culture has had in destroying them, but it's a waste of time. There are people out there still speaking the languages, there are people still learning the languages, there's a language culture in there that needs to be supported, that needs to be heard, that needs to have venue, it needs to have place, and it's, it, it's a celebration of the tremendous diversity of human intelligence.